This is video number 20 in a series about complex arithmetic methods and geometric interpretations. In the last video, we looked at powers of complex numbers, and we saw that it's beneficial to write the complex number in polar form for raising it to a power. So if z was equal to r times e to the i theta, then z to the n can be written as r to the n, the modulus raised to the n power, times e to the i n theta, take the theta, the argument of the complex number, and add it to itself n times if n is a positive integer, effectively multiplying it by n. <clears throat> we applied it to this example here. If z was 1 plus square root of 3i, we wrote that in polar form as 2 e to the i pi over 3, raised that to the fifth power, and converted back to rectangular form and got this. Then we visualized it down here. Let me start in this video by modifying this visual a little bit to set us up for doing something else with it. So I'm going to add some options here. First of all, I'm going to make the plot range bigger. I'm going to go from 30 to 30 in all directions. And then to make it a little bit more true as far as the angles go, I'm going to use aspect ratio, arrow automatic. Alright, so let's just take a look at this, think about it. Here's the original complex number, 1 plus square root of 3i, right there. When I square it, the angle gets doubled and the modulus gets uh, multiplied by itself, gets squared. So the original length here was 2. The new length of this squared, 1 is 4. The length of this one is 8, and you can see it's at negative 8. Then the length of this one becomes 16, then 32. The original angle was 60 degrees, this angle is 120, then 180 degrees, then 240 degrees for the fourth power, and then 300 degrees for the fifth power. Let's also label the axes for extra emphasis here. Axes label, we'll do that. Real is the horizontal, and imaginary is the vertical. All right, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to show you, focus on using Mathematica for the rest of this video to um, make an animation with locator that will allow us to move the starting point around and uh, see how the powers get affected. This is going to be a little bit complicated. You might want to pause it every so often. Um, first of all, I'm going, to, I'm going to put this in a manipulate, manipulate which will do the animation. I need to specify an animation parameter, typically. Usually it's a, a, a number that can vary between two values, but in using a locator, um, I want to, it's going to be a point that moves around, and I want to give that point a starting value. I'm going to go ahead and call it PT for point, and I'll give it a starting value equal to 1 comma square root of 3, actually, our original number here, 1, one plus square root of 3i was our original number, and then put the word locator after this. So what this is going to do is it's going to create an animation where because I'm using the word locator here I'm going to have a cursor at the point 1 comma square root of 3 in this plane and I'm going to be able to move the cursor around to animate it. Now I, did, I need to make modifications up here to make any difference but I think if I enter this as is I'll at least see the cursor. Let's see what happens here. Going a little slow. There we go. Yeah, I do see the cursor. I can move this around. It's not affecting any, anything else because I didn't make any other changes. Let's go back up and make changes. It's going to be a little bit tricky here, too. What I really want for my point is I want the first coordinate of PT to be the real part and the second coordinate of PT to be the imaginary part of my complex number. So I can do that with PT uh, square double square brackets, 1 n double square brackets. That'll be the first coordinate of PT. At the start it'll be 1. Do the same thing over here, but put a 2 in there. That'll be the second coordinate of PT, the point. I'll do the same thing over here. So what I've done now, it is this is my imaginary number that ultimately is going to be able to be moved around the plane. 
and I'm raising it to the n power and I'm looking at the real part, that's going to be the first coordinate of my point that I plot. Then this thing is going to be the second coordinate of the point that I plot. So we will see the red dots moving around here as we move the cursor. I haven't changed the... Actually, excuse me, we're going to see the black, the blue lines move around. These are the, the thick blue lines here. So we're going to see those move around. The red dots are going to stay where they are. But the blue lines can move around here. So now I need to do this, a similar kind of thing with the red dots. Uh, let's see here. Probably would be beneficial there up here to use table as well. Rem remember from the last video that table um, makes lists. This thing is a list. It's a list of points, a list of lists really. Think of those sublist as being points. We can use table to create this list and allow us to use the locator and the um, moving the cursor around to make changes. So let's see, table and let's see, it should just work to use this exact same thing right here. Got to be careful about where my curly braces end here. I think that'll do it. Then I need to say what n does. n goes from 1 to 5 in the table. And I think this is going to do it. Maybe pause it and take a look at this, think about this. Let's hope. Here we go. Yeah, now I have both the points and the line segments moving around. So we're looking at an arbitrary complex numbers number and its fifth powers here. And no matter where we are, of course, the modulus and argument principle has to hold. If we're over here, it's still holding. The angles add and the moduli get multiplied. I noticed that the origin sort of moved around a little bit there. If you ever have that happen to you, you can always fix that by doing axes origin arrow zero zero will keep the act, keep the origin where it should be. It was usually where it should be, but I, I noticed it move around a little bit there. Notice if we have a real starting number, then all the powers have to be real as well, and positive if the starting number is positive, whereas if it's negative, then they alternate between positive and negative. So if this, the, if this is the original number, there's the second power there, the third power there, the fourth, and the fifth. If our original point is within the unit circle, so that its modulus is less than 1, something like this, then when you raise the modulus to higher powers, it gets even smaller and it approaches the origin. When it's outside the unit circle, then its modulus is greater than 1, and the powers keep getting bigger and bigger moduli themselves, and they go away from the origin and, in fact, go to infinity. If you write down the unit circle, and I haven't drawn that here, then, then the modulus is 1, and it's going to stay 1 for all higher powers. And that's something that we could... I guess we have time to, to see that here. Let me change the um, plot range back down to being small. And I could draw the unit circle in here too, but I won't take the time to do that. You can see it looks like the modulus is very close to one there. We're very close to being on the unit circle and all the powers also would be on the unit circle then. And they just keep, we just keep rotating around as we have higher and higher powers. And that'll be the end of this video.